Hi, welcome back to our conversation with Dr. Stephen Katznelson, the uh, medical director of the kidney transplant program here at the California Pacific Medical Center. Um, welcome back to this segment. Um, we had initially talked about uh, the California Pacific Medical Transplant uh, Medical Center Transplant Program, and we are here to delve into the topic of pair donations, which is a very interesting topic. So, um, Dr. Nelson, please start off by kind of explaining the concept of pair donations for um, some of our patients who may not have heard of this concept before. Okay. The 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 main goal of pair donation is to get more people transplanted. Mm -hmm. um, and a uh, little, little background, um, in Japan and Korea, um, this technology or philosophy started uh, decades ago, mm -hmm. mainly because of differences in uh, availability of deceased donor kidney transplants. They have very different um, laws about brain death, and so there are very few deceased donors. And so they're, they they spend a lot of their efforts trying to develop new ways of offering live donor transplants. Um, kidney pair donation is, a, is, is an attempt to get recipients who have a living donor, but that donor is not compatible with them, is trying to get that recipient transplanted. So, so the classic example would be a recipient who came to us who was a blood type A. Mm -hmm. and they have an excellent do living donor who wants to donate to them, but they're blood type B. And so because that's a blood type incompatibility, mm -hmm. we can't easily do that transplant. Um, and historically, that recipient, <clears throat> although they had a donor who wanted to donate to them, they're incompatible, they don't get credit for that, they end up on this long waiting list that we discussed in the last segment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what kidney pair donation does is takes a large pool of people who have uh, an incompatible donor, mm -hmm. puts them in a pool, and uses computer software technology to try to match them up with other similar people who have an incompatible donor. So back to this example I, I mentioned to you where there's a, there's a blood type B a recipient, say with a blood type A donor, we would try to find a blood type A recipient with a blood type B donor and swap those two kidneys out. So give the B to the B and the A to the A. It becomes very complex because there are really two levels of incompatibility. There's the one that's blood type compatibility. And then there's a second level of, of compatibility that is immunologic. Um, and uh, people can be ABO blood type incompatible, mm -hmm. immunologically incompatible, or both. And when you have a large pool of people who are immunologically incompatible, it's impossible to look at a list and say A, B, B, A because there are many, many, too many um, factors to take mm -hmm. in and try to find that match. So let me make sure that I'm understanding Certainly. this correctly so I'm interpreting. And, and let's use an example that we were saying earlier. Let's say that I need a transplant. Mm -hmm. And let's say that my sister or brother, my sibling, says, but I will, I'm very willing to give you a kidney. But it turns out that my sister, let's say, can't donate to me because we are incompatible in some way. Let's say blood types are different. So you're saying that in the past, that there would have been no opportunity to perform that transplant. I would have then, even though my sister's perfectly willing to donate to me, I'd have to go on the waiting list. And uh, with this, are you saying effectively that, uh, let's say there's another couple out there, let's say a, a husband and his wife, and this other couple, they also want to donate to each other, but they can't be compatible. So you may have a situation where my sister would donate to that other couple, and that other couple will then donate to me. This way everyone gets the kidney, and their living donors are, have the opportunity to donate. Did I just explain that? I think that? you got it right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, but, um, but those simple cases uh -huh. where it's an easy to identify two by two mm -hmm. match are very uncommon. Um, and and, um, and in part, the A, the A, the blood types A, B, A, B, and O mm -hmm. are relatively easy to go by, but the, the, the factors that make people immunologically incompatible mm -hmm. have to do with antibodies in their system that um, can be any one of a, of a hundred, or hundreds of different types. So when you're trying to match incompatible pairs, there are multiple variables that come in to try and find the right matching. So it takes computer software okay. to do it. 
there seems to me that there's an implication that, you know, the example I just gave was two couples. Mm -hmm. The implication is that you can get multiple couples in this, almost like a daisy chain, is that? So, so is that, you're, you're absolutely right. Okay. So, so this can involve two pairs of people, mm -hmm. it can involve three. Um, at, at, at our center we've gone as, as far as five pairs done in a single day. Wow. Um, and, um, and technically speaking with a big enough pool that, that number could be 20 or 30. Mm -hmm. um, we call these types of pair donations where it's two by two or three by three but all done on the same day, mm -hmm. matched by the computer, mm -hmm. finish their evaluations and all transfer on the same day, a closed loop. Okay. Um, and there's a second type of kidney pair donation that's started by what's termed an altruistic donor. The situation that we've spoken of mm -hmm. is where there's one person who wants to donate to one person. Okay. And they can't because they're incompatible. Right. An altruistic donor, otherwise termed a non-directed donor, is someone who just wants to give a kidney, like giving a pint of blood. Wow. They just want to give to anybody. Mm -hmm. Those people can start a daisy chain where they can they can they can start off a chain of up to 30 different transplants that happen down downstream and technically speaking if the pool is big enough those could go on forever too those those um, those daisy chains or, or, or chain transplants um, usually happen in sections mm -hmm. so three or four up to seven transplants will be done in a day often involving different centers in different parts of the country um, and then there's a pause while another segment of the chain is arranged. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to the closed loops that we do at the center that are finished on a, on a day, these can go on over weeks and months. So for someone new to this, this can be a little bit mind-blowing. So you're talking about, um, in this case, an altruistic donor who just, out of the goodness of their hearts, offer to donate a kidney. They can literally kick off a day where you know, uh, many people get transplanted all on the same day. And then, and then uh, there's, there's a pause, mm -hmm. and then that, that same chain can continue mm -hmm. on another day in another city. So they can, they, these altruistic donors can, can kick off dozens of transplants. Wow, that's, that's really, um, that's, that's very, uh, that's <laughs> very altruistic. I'm a little lack for words, but that is certainly, it's an amazing it's gift. An amazing gift uh, those, God bless those people. Um, so now, talking about, these are two scenarios. Let's talk about the closed loop, as you were saying earlier. Um, what does it take? It, does it simply take one, I guess, pair to say, I would like to donate, but they're not matched to kind of start the process? I, I, I look at this as a puzzle, as a jigsaw mm -hmm. puzzle. Okay. And um, in our pool of patients, one can think of it as a puzzle with a missing piece. Mm -hmm. Um, and the puzzle can't be finished unless that missing piece mm -hmm. is found. Um, and then one day walks a patient, a new evaluation patient that we mm -hmm. see at our center who has a living donor with whom they're incompatible. If that pair is just the right puzzle piece, they not only not, could get themselves transplanted mm -hmm. by pair donation, but set up that everybody else who was another piece of the puzzle would get transplanted at the same time. Um, the, it's, it's a very difficult concept and actually quite difficult without graphics, <laughs> right. um, but there, there, there should be an important takeaway for people who are interested in this process. Mm -hmm. and the main thing is that um, you can come to a transplant center like ours who, who offers kidney pair donation with a donor and you don't have to be compatible. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not compatible and you agree to participate, we immediately um, load those, that pair's data into our database mm -hmm. and immediately then run the software to try to find pairings. Um, we found that, that you know, speed is of the essence for our patients, mm -hmm. so we do this with speed. Um, if um, given our, our, our database, which is a CPMC database, mm -hmm. if we are unable to find a good swap, a good mm -hmm. kidney pair donation, we will then upload that patient's data to a national database, mm -hmm. pushing it higher, and in that way, conceivably, um, exposing that recip our recipient to other potential donors in the national community that might get them transplanted faster by pair donation. So literally, this um, donate this this ex this swap, as you termed it, could occur across different cities nationwide. Then, right? 
Yes, if um, the, the, the kidney peregrinations that we identify using our own software mm -hmm. um, um, are done at our center. Mm -hmm. But once we push it up to a national level, um, then we could receive a kidney from New York, mm -hmm. get our recipient transplanted, um, take the kidney out of that recipient's incompatible donor, mm -hmm. and ship it out to Los Angeles right. as, as part of this chain. So, so if you have a, a willing donor, and they're not compatible, but but everyone is in agreement on doing this. You literally move right up to the top of the list, as they say, right? I mean, you can you can start to the process right away after all the screenings, obviously. Right? Yes. So so th th there should be a distinction that there's no there's no real waiting list for live donation. So okay. they don't change their spot on the deceased donor waiting list. Mm -hmm. But the, even if they're not compatible mm -hmm. with the recipient, there's still hope that we can get the recipient transplanted using pair donation. This is really a uh, this is really fascinating. Now, um, of course, what what are some of the risks that a patient might consider for something like this? Well, there, there's there's really um, no additional risk to the recipient outside of those uh, gen in general associated with the transplant. Mm -hmm. Do you mean with respect to kidney pair donation? Yeah, with respect to pair pair donations. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I understand it correctly, the surgery itself. This is not a new surgical procedure, mm -hmm. right? There's no. I don't think that there's any change in how the surgery is done, so I would imagine that the surgical risk of the transplant is essentially the same. Mm -hmm. Are there any other risks in terms of uh, um, how this program is handled? I guess. In, you know, well, so any, so any other cons any considerations? There, there are many considerations. Yeah. So, for the moment, I'm. Uh, well, let's put aside the 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 general present risks. To any donor, any recipient, okay. and focus more on the issues related to kidney pair donation. Mm -hmm. Because the other, who I'm happy to answer, would be a different sure. topic. Mm -hmm. um, the there there are, there are no additional surgical risks to the donor, recipient, and kidney pair donation. Mm -hmm. um, everything goes as if they had been able to donate to each other. There um, there had been some concerns. That um, by taking a donor kidney, a living donor kidney out, mm -hmm. and shipping it to another center, mm -hmm. that that time um, where the, the kidney is on a, in a cold storage solution mm -hmm. might do some damage to the kidney and cause it not to work as well on the other side mm -hmm. for the other recipient. And this was a major concern because one of the benefits to live donation, uh, uh, one of the uh, benefits we thought we had with live donation was. Uh, in the old way of doing things, a recipient and, and donor were near each other in the mm -hmm. operating room. Kidney came out of the donor into the recipient with very little time spent mm -hmm. uh, out of body. Mm -hmm. But now that we're shipping living donor kidneys, the question came up, is that causing any damage? Mm -hmm. And if it causes damage to the kidney, um, would the experience of the donor be different? Because now mm -hmm. they're giving a kidney that might not work so well. The recipient. Right. So, so that, has, uh, that concern has basically gone to the wayside. Um, uh, we were part of a study, uh, a national study, um, using um, kidney pair donation software mm -hmm. and, and, and ultimately sending many kidneys, um, uh, 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 living donor kidneys by air up to 14 or 15 hours out of body with no detriment to the transplant. So these shipped living donor kidneys were behaving as if they weren't shipped. Wow. And that made a big difference, and I think made made the donors feel a lot better right. uh, that they were giving something that's going to work well for the person to whom mm -hmm. it was going, um, and um, also made recipients of these shipped kidneys feel that they were getting what they were giving. Right. Wow. Okay. How long has this? Um, well, you were you were mentioning that this concept initially started in Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, how long has CPMC been performing uh, this? Uh, so our very first was in two thousand and three. Okay. Um, this was one of the Simple, we'll call it A, B, and B, A switches mm -hmm. that we um, that I identified just on, on the list of patients. Mm -hmm. But um, it was in 2006 that one of our uh, one of our patients, who actually worked for Microsoft, uh, sat in this office with me. Um, he had had a successful kidney transplant with us, and said, "What can I give back?" And we came up with the notion of trying to write kidney pair uh -huh. software uh -huh. that would serve our patients. Um, and modeled it after similar software done in other places, such as Johns Hopkins. Um, so we started that project really 2005, 2006. Our first transplant uh, using it was in 2007. Oh, I see. So it was one of your patients who wrote the software to... Uh, 
That's right. <laughs> that's 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 a great, that's great news. Um, so it, now you have this situation where, uh, if, if effectively you have a willing donor, but um, otherwise they would not be able to donate. But the effect is that you that their loved one would then be getting a kidney right mm -hmm. away. And that's essentially the benefit, right? Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the only there's a certain twist, obviously, in the mindset is that. Uh, the recipient would not be getting their donor's kidney. You know, that, that's, it, it seems to me that's the, that's the slight change of mind frame that one has to kind of familiarize oneself, right? And, and you, you bring up a very good point, and, and it, it unfortunately dissuades some people from donating because their notion of donating if they want to save their husband or their wife or right. their son or daughter or brother or sister is that they are giving to mm -hmm. their loved ones. Um, and when they find out they're incompatible, there are a segment of people who want to stop there, mm -hmm. and um, 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 it used to be it used to be more people who stopped there. And mm -hmm. I think now that the notion of kidney pair donation um, is becoming more clear and the practice of it more broad, that people are feeling a little bit more comfortable with it. But we still have people who say, "I only want to give if I can give directly to my directly to my loved one." And I, I can see that obviously everybody had everyone's going to make their own choices. It's a purely private matter, but. Effect, what you're saying is effectively uh, someone who needs a kidney, they are essentially getting, essentially equivalent to a living donor, a kidney. So, so one, of the, one of the ways that we've had, that we've developed of, of solving this problem, making mm -hmm. people feel better about it, mm -hmm. is um, trying to make sure that a donor's loved one with whom they're incompatible gets a kidney that we consider on equal par with the kidney that we're going to give up. Let me give an example. Okay. Um, uh, let's say that you're my sibling mm -hmm. and that we're a few years apart in age. Um, and um, I want to give you a kidney, but we're incompatible. Mm -hmm. um, and let's just say we're both 40. I'm going to give us both a benefit. Sure. Well, all over that. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll, we'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Um, um, and uh, I was not compatible with you, mm -hmm. um, and we were going to go into kidney pair donation. Now, though I could find a match, say I could find a match with many other donors for you, mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't take a kidney from a 68-year-old and offer it to you I see. Uh, because that 68-year-old kidney might not be equivalent to my 40-year-old kidney as far as longevity goes. Right. Okay. And so, so we can use the software and actually, we can actually put criteria into the software and say, well, I don't want a kidney that's from a donor older than 50, I don't want a kidney from someone who's under say 50 kilograms mm -hmm. because smaller kidneys may also not be as good mm -hmm. and try to um, then show the donor that although their kidney's not going directly into their into their loved one that their loved one will benefit equally as if they had donated directly so that's a particular uh, refinement on the concept of donation that may be unfamiliar to some people which is that it's a kidney it's not just a kidney right there's like, like you said age factor body mass uh, all of this so that's a uh, that's part of the whole process that which you're. That's part of the equation when you're trying to perform yeah. this match, right? Now we, we try to we try to convince uh, patients not to not to put too much emphasis on that mm -hmm. because I wouldn't want someone to not get transplanted right. only because they were getting a kidney that was ten years older than them. Correct. Clearly, the benefits of transplantation outweigh those kind of risks for most recipients. Mm -hmm. But in the cases where this does become an issue, mm -hmm. it is important. Um, and um, a, another way that we can use kidney pair donation that's, that has a similar ring to it mm -hmm. as this does is utilizing um, pairs who are compatible with each other in pair donation. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm your, I, I'm not your sibling anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not your age anymore, but I'm your 68-year-old uh, parent. Okay. Um, and let's just say you were 40, but you're 30. Mm -hmm. And that's quite an age disparity, 68 down to 30. Right. But we were compatible with each other. Conceivably, with kidney pair donation, we could enter the kidney pair donation pool, and I could draw a twenty-year-old kidney for you. Uh huh. All right. Where, whereas I could place uh, the sixty-eight-year-old parent's kidney into someone else who needed it, but it's hard to match, mm -hmm. and everybody gets what they need, and you've basically gotten a living donor kidney um, instead of from your father, um, from a younger person, uh, wherein the kidney will likely work much longer in your body than an older kidney might. That allows for a great deal of flexibility. I had not thought about that. It sounds like this process really opens things up to uh, uh, very creative ways of solving this problem. 
Um, now it's been since you said since two thousand three, so it's been a little over ten years now, mm -hmm. and uh, so ha you're seeing that this type of procedure is increasing in volume. Uh, Absolutely, um, and it has um, really become a, a part of our daily work mm -hmm. here. Um, as I said, there's there's speed. We're, we're working to get patients transplanted as quickly as mm -hmm. possible. Um, so we identify the incompatible pairs and have them on the perinatal waiting list almost immediately oh, if, if they're if they're interested. Okay. So now, if I were a patient and I had that situation, I had someone who's willing to donate but they're not compatible. Um, how? What, what would I have to do to be considered for a part of this uh, donation? So we have a, we have a, a, a living donor coordinator team, mm -hmm. um, and they really do the intake mm -hmm. um, and, um, and make a determination as to whether someone's compatible or not. Um, in the old days, what we would do is, once a living donor became interested, mm -hmm. we would send them uh, some blood tubes to fill up to check for compatibility. But nowadays, um, if a recipient say only has one potential living donor, mm -hmm. and there are no other donors on the table, related or unrelated, um, we don't really care so much if they're compatible mm -hmm. anymore, um, because we know that if they're compatible, we'll go to transplant. Mm -hmm. If they're incompatible and easy to match, we'll go to transplant via kidney pair donation. So we actually save time with the blood tubes now, and don't send them out, and if someone only has one living donor, bring them in for evaluation, mm -hmm. knowing that they'll donate in one direction or another. This seems like an innovation that's really made a difference. Uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> this is great news. Well, thank you very much for um, going over in this detail, uh, and I really appreciate it. And um, now you mentioned something earlier in our conversation, which is uh, talking about you know ages and, and all this type, type of, um, the, the, the finer points of matching a, a kidney, and I believe you correct me if I'm wrong. That believe that may play into our next topic, which is uh, uh, new and uh, new changes in the uh, patient in the kidney allocation program. So, thank you for sticking with us for this segment. We'll go to the next segment where we talk about some of the new changes in the uh, allocation procedures for uh, kidney donations. Thank you, Dr. Kensnasa.